Chapter 16, Covalent Bonding Let's review types of bonding. Ionic bonding involves a transfer of electrons. The ionic compounds that are formed are brittle crystalline structures. Metallic bonding involves a sea of electrons that surround the metal cations. The electrons can move through to conduct electricity and the cations can move over the electrons for malleability. Why do atoms bond together to form compounds at all? Why do some atoms transfer their electrons while others share their electrons to form these compounds? We're going to look at how covalent bonds form in order to form molecular compounds like these examples. The covalent bond is a sharing of electrons between two or more atoms. If the electronegativity difference is small, 0 to 0.3, we usually say that electrons are being shared between atoms, a covalent bond. If it is large, greater than 1.7 to 4, then we usually say they transfer their electrons for an ionic bond. Covalent compounds are made from two or more nonmetal elements. They are formed by sharing these electrons. They have low melting points, especially compared with ionic compounds, which means they're usually liquids or gases at room temperature with very low melting points, and they're not electrolytes. They don't conduct electricity when dissolved in water. Nonmetal atoms can join together to form bonds. Nonmetal atoms have high ionization energies. They don't want to lose their electrons. In fact, they prefer to take electrons into their orbitals to have a noble gas arrangement of electrons. Covalent bonds will form between nonmetals as they share these electrons in order to achieve an octet of electrons. An atom is most stable when it has eight electrons or an octet in its valence shell. Except for hydrogen or helium, these only have the ability to hold a duet or two electrons. Nonmetal atom orbitals will arrange so that each atom thinks it has a full octet or duet, and it will do this by sharing electrons between orbitals forming a bond. So how does a covalent bond form? The nuclei with like charges that are positive would repel each other. The electrons with negative charges would repel each other. So what would be the force that draws the two atoms together? The nuclei of each atom pulls the electrons of its own atom as well as the adjacent atom towards it. By pulling the electrons towards it, they pull their nuclei together and form the bond. Let's see how a bond actually occurs. As two hydrogen atoms approach each other, at first there's not any attraction between them because they're too far apart. As they get closer together, the nuclei begin to attract the electrons of each adjacent atom. At the distance where the attractive forces overcome the repulsive forces, the bond forms and the potential energy is at its lowest. If the atoms get too close together, they actually repel each other and the energy goes way up, making the atom unstable. So they return to the optimum distance, which is called the bond length. The distance between is the bond length, and the energy at that distance is the bond energy. Lewis dot structures will allow us to predict the molecular geometry of a molecule. The rules for Lewis dot structures are as follows. The symbol of the element represents the nucleus and all of the inner electrons. The dots that you place represent the valence electrons. Your valence electrons will not pair up until they need to. Let's write the Lewis dot structure for fluorine with seven valence electrons. We usually place the first electron at the top, but actually you can place it anywhere. Once you place it, you need to move clockwise. So we'll place the first electron at the top. We then place the second electron, the third electron, and the fourth electron. After this, you'll go back to the top and start pairing up electrons. We place the fifth electron here, the sixth electron, and finally the seventh electron. 
Each F atom wants to fill its S and P orbitals with eight electrons. The nucleus of each atom will pull the electrons towards it and in doing so will pull the atoms together. The two atoms will share the two electrons, each thinking that they have eight valence electrons. By sharing electrons, they are both tricked into thinking that they have full S and P orbitals, a full octet. You can see the electrons that are in the overlapping orbitals of each fluorine atom. These would be the bonding electrons. We use a line between two atoms to represent these two bonding electrons. These are other representations of bonding atoms. The one in the upper left corner is the ball and stick model, and the one in the right corner is space field model.